Well, when you are trying to have a well-trained dog, there are some critical steps to take at the beginning of the process. Jeff Ellenwood is the owner and operator of South Carolina Canine Academy. Jeff, always good to have you with us. Thank you for having me, Donnie. I appreciate you, you it. You always have such good information. Tell us about the dog you have with you today. So this is Elijah. He actually has a He's one of my client's dogs. Uh, he's done a lot of different obedience. He does marathons with his owners. You can check out his social media at Elijah on the run. No, for real? He for has real. his own social media? Yes, he has more followers than me. And and he truly is a runner with his... Yep. Oh, they wow. Do marathons. Oh, They've hey, been doing bud. them for years, yeah. Okay, Elijah. What kind of dog is Elijah? Everything. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like those, yes. A good everything dog. Well, Elijah, you're sweet, I can tell. Yeah. Let's go ahead and pull the full screen. You say there are four things you need to do to make sure you're getting the most out of your dog's training. First, Jeff says, uh, go commit to getting your dog and yourself trained and yourself. We'll talk about that in a second. List your training goals and issues and be specific. Have your dog evaluated before starting a training program and ask questions. Yes. So there are four critical steps in getting the best value and results. Let's go through the very first one, Jeff. Commit to getting your dog and yourself trained. Yes, so this is more of a mindset thing, and the people I meet who do this before they meet me get done sooner and save money and time. Sure. So it's you're just saying, hey, buddy, like, we got to get this done sooner rather than later. I'm going to meet with somebody. I'm going to keep our appointments. I'm going to try not to reschedule. I'm going to uh, do the homework twice a day, every day. I'm going to take videos of the exercise. I'm going to read the notes. I'm going to print them out, highlight them. Just be a good student. And if you go in there going, let's get this done, you'll save money and time because you probably see a lot of clients that are kind of like well you know today was kind of a long day I don't feel like doing this and then the work doesn't get done right and they kind of the mentality like could you fix this it's bothering me <laughs> and then they just kind of you uh, know I am gonna tell on you and this is a compliment to okay. you because <laughs> because when you said you know and keep the appointments yeah I, for those who don't know like we had like with a lot of breaking news that we had over the last sure. few weeks I kept having to reschedule you and every time I tried to Jeff was like I can't back out on my client commitment so yeah. I, I was really impressed okay. with that so we're glad we were able to fit you in sure. now so thank you for that so your second point is list your training goals and issues and be specific mm -hmm. to me I just thought everybody wants their dog to be super well behaved but you're saying that you should really look at specific goals yeah so uh, for here's how it saves you time and money if you uh, if I was a more unscrupulous trainer and somebody goes, I just need my dog to listen. Well, my definition of a dog listening and somebody who's not a professional trainer could be volumes different. So if you list it out, you know exactly what you're looking for. Maybe you're just like, I want him to walk loose leash in the neighborhood and come and call in the backyard and not jump. Whereas I might say, I want to take the dog hiking in the mountains and off leash control and all this other crazy stuff. So know what you want to do and just say, here's what I want my dog to do. Here's what I want to not do. Here's where I want to go to be able to do it. And if you have specific uh, specific incidents that happened. Yes. Outline what happened, where was I, where was the dog, blah, blah, blah. This way, when you're talking to the trainer, you can get more done and make sure the program is more set towards what you want to do. That's good information. And does it change, I assume, if you have a young dog, one to three years of age, versus an older dog, six and up? It can. And that's going to kind of, uh, you're, you're dovetailing perfectly in the next one, but yeah. every dog's a little bit different. They have different personalities, and mm -hmm. so... And that's know. what you say, is have your dog evaluated before right. starting a training program. Exactly. So every dog's a little bit different. Everybody loves to do the 23andMe on their dogs, like, oh, what is he? Right, right. right. Well, wouldn't you like to know the same 23andMe of your dog's personality, whether yes. different drives or a social... Yes. Uh, Prey driver uh, uh, yeah. food, and as well as how do they react and resolve to different things in the environment, personal stressors, r retain things? Because mm -hmm. I've had people call me and go, Oh, he's just being stubborn and hard headed. And I get there, and they have a very soft, submissive dog. It goes into a piece, and they're like, Hey, sit. And the dog's like, I'm sorry. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh -huh. And I'm like, Your dog's not stubborn. It's just apologizing because it thinks you're mad. Uh, so interesting. if you have a dog evaluation, you know what you're working towards. And the last point you tell viewers, if, if and when they're getting a trainer, is to ask questions. Yes, I have a bunch of questions you can ask people hope we can do another one again but yeah ask questions the way you learn about a company and a trainer is to ask questions um, learn as much as you can the first question I always get is price and I understand it money doesn't grow on trees mm -hmm. but um, when I hear that question first I go oh they don't have enough information they don't know better questions to ask and I definitely have a bunch of them but yeah learn about the traders see if it's gonna be a good fit for you see if it's what you're looking for otherwise again if you you just throw money out the window if it's not gonna be a good fit all right, good information. And again, this is Elijah. Elijah. Elijah, you can tell your family you did a great job on TV, okay? <laughs> How sweet. Can you talk to my dogs and say, please get off the sofa? <laughs> That's why I was wondering about the age on training. I'm like, my dogs are 
up in age now. Yeah, there was that old saying, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. That's what I'm with. Yeah. yeah, well, yeah. and I think, I think I was the one that needed to be trained more because I'm yeah. thinking, oh, they're so cute on the sofa, I let know. them stay, I you know? know. <laughs> and that's why you're saying you have to have the training right. as the adult yes. as much as the dog. You're just learning a foreign language, that's all it is, that's just a skill. Thank you. Thank Jeff you. Ellenwood with the South Carolina Canine Academy. I will put a link on my Facebook page so people can get in touch with you or just you put a lot of information just for education. Yep, and I'll expound upon all these things. I'll make some videos and put it on the Facebook as well too. I love that you do that for yeah. the viewers. Thank you so much. Thank you. More Soda City Live right after this. Yay!